Hi, welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. What if federal lawmakers put forward a budget plan to tax big financial institutions, enact a health care public option, and increase spending to put millions of Americans back to work? Well, some of them did. You just didn't hear about it or read about it. The Progressive Caucus's Better Off budget was released on March 12th. It was hardly picked up anywhere in the media, though. A few blog posts here and there, and one segment on an afternoon MSNBC show, where host Alex Wagner said this. So, will it pass? No. But should it be discussed? Most certainly. The rest of the media didn't see it that way, though. The contrast with budget plans coming from the right is particularly instructive here. Paul Ryan's austerity budgets don't stand a chance of passing Congress either. But that hasn't stopped any media outlets from giving Washington's favorite wonk ample and often uncritical media attention. But the media lesson here is a lot bigger than one particular politician or one budget. The failure to treat these progressive and very popular ideas seriously means that they're not even part of the debate about how the country should spend its money. And the media's decision to narrow that debate severely limits the country's political options. When Barack Obama released his budget, the New York Times dubbed it a populist wish list. They didn't mean that as a compliment. That label might more accurately apply to the better off budget, something the New York Times didn't cover at all. On March 18th, the Washington Post brought unnerving news. The NSA is able to store every phone call made in an entire nation and replay them for up to 30 days. According to files released by Edward Snowden, not only can the agency do this, they are doing it right now in a country called, well, the Washington Post knows, but they're not saying. The paper explains that a senior manager for the program compares it to a time machine one that can replay the voices from any call without requiring that a person be identified in advance for surveillance. Well, that's very interesting, not to say horrifying, but the Post withholds a very crucial part of the story. At the request of U.S. officials, the Washington Post is withholding details that could be used to identify the country where the system is being employed or other countries where its use was envisioned. Of course, this isn't the first time something like this has happened. The Post's Dana Priest uncovered shocking details about the U.S. government's overseas prisons, the so-called black sites, but would not reveal the countries that were hosting the CIA's secret jails. The Post was one of several outlets that knew the CIA had built a drone base in Saudi Arabia, but it kept the location secret because the government requested it do so. Now, it's impossible to know why this information is being withheld, but it's safe to assume that the public reaction here and elsewhere could be very different depending on which country is being targeted. Managing that reaction is what the NSA is up to. So why is the Washington Post helping them do that? And finally, there are plenty of people who don't get to appear on the Sunday chat shows. Labor leaders, environmental activists, critical academics, and so on. Former CNBC host Maria Bartiromo is about to launch her own Sunday chat show on Fox News Channel, and she has one more group to add to that list. Because I feel like there's a void in the market. Uh, we never hear business people as part of the conversation on a Sunday. I only hear politicos doing their talking points. I want to get the guy in the front line, the gal in the front line, telling us why they're not taking money from overseas and putting it here. What should tax reform look like? What should immigration reform look like? So I'm going to bring business people into the conversation on a Sunday morning. Wow, Sunday morning interviews with CEOs. Why has no one else thought of this already? Of course, some programs have been brave enough to bring on corporate big shots. Here's David Gregory's first show as host of Meet the Press. Plus, three top business voices. Former Hewlett Packard CEO Carly Fiorina, Walmart President and CEO Lee Scott, and Google CEO Eric Schmidt. And of course, corporations exert their influence over Sunday chat shows through advertising. Boeing has sponsored Meet the Press, Archer Daniels Midland had sponsored ABC's This Week, and so on and so on. Paying the bills in corporate media is a good way to make sure your views are heard. You might say it even beats being on the screen. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.